we've learned that one of the major rules for drawing resonance structures is don't break sigma bonds. Um, another major rule is that you um, are not allowed to exceed an octet. Don't exceed an octet. Don't exceed an octet. That is, you don't want to draw electron pushing arrows that would end up giving an atom more than an octet. You don't want to draw electron pushing arrows that would end up giving an atom more than an octet. By the way, notice the word exceed. It's okay to have less than an octet. It's legal for an atom to have less than eight electrons. Sometimes it's not very significant, but sometimes it's, it is somewhat significant. Um, so if you have less than an octet, that tends to give you a somewhat less significant resonance structure, but it can still definitely be important enough to be worth drawing. Um, so in many cases, you will draw resonance structures that have less than an octet. But we will not draw resonance structures that have more than an octet. We will not draw resonance structures where an atom has more than eight electrons. If you've been paying close attention, you actually know there's one little exception to this. We've already mentioned that a atom in the third period or below could exceed an octet. We've even seen a couple examples of that. So this is actually not quite as hard and fast a rule as this one. This rule, don't break sigma bonds, that never gets broken when you're doing resonance. But this rule can be broken if you're in the third period or below. So you might want to make a note, you should not exceed an octet except uh, maybe for an atom that's in the third period or below. But as I mentioned, those are actually not very important in organic chemistry. Uh, they, they can come up, but they're much less important, so we're not going to focus on that too much. Except for atoms in the third period and below, when you're doing resonance, um, um, or really any type of electron pushing arrow, you don't want to exceed an octet. So this is really a rule that's not just true for resonance, but also, even though we're not focusing on that, for reaction mechanisms. Well, we've seen that you're not allowed to do this type of transition. You can't take a lone pair on one atom and make it into a lone pair on another atom. Um, what about taking a pi bond and making it into a lone pair? Well, we know that's one of the allowed transitions. So let's talk a little bit more about when this is legal and when it isn't. Well, remember, one of the main things we have to worry about is exceeding an octet. We don't want to draw any resonance structures that are going to have an atom with more than eight electrons. But the thing I want to stress here is that when you're forming a lone pair, it's impossible to exceed an octet. When you're forming a lone pair, you don't need to worry that you're exceeding an octet because there's no way that could possibly come up. So we don't need to worry about breaking the octet rule. We don't need to worry about exceeding an octet when we're forming a lone pair. Well, let me show you why that is. Acetone. Now, we don't normally draw all the lone pairs, but here I am going to draw the lone pairs to make it easier to see whether the oxygen is exceeding an octet. And I'm also going to draw the pairs of electrons in the sigma and pi bonds here. So I'm drawing all the pairs of electrons around this oxygen. We've drawn all the pairs of electrons around the oxygen. So how many um, electrons does the oxygen have? Uh, well, for purposes of the octet rule, we would say it has eight. These two it owns these two it owns, and these four electrons it's sharing. But for purposes of evaluating the octet rule, we treat um, the uh, electrons that are being shared just the same way as the electrons that are being owned. So the total number of electrons that are either owned or shared around this oxygen are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, so far it's not exceeding the octet rule. Now let's try drawing a resonance structure. Now notice this is a pi bond to lone pair transition. Pi bond to lone pair. Take a second to uh, draw the resonance structure that comes from this. That should now be very easy for you to draw the resonance structure that comes from this electron pushing arrow. I hope you did that. 
the redraw and modify technique. So at the tail, we need to erase the two electrons in the pi bond. So at the tail, I'm going to erase the two electrons in the pi bond. And because this is the initial tail, this atom is going to change its charge and become positive. And then at the head, the head is pointing directly at the oxygen, so we have to form a lone pair. So I'm forming that lone pair, and since that's the head, we have to put a charge up here. So here's the resonance structure that's suggested by this arrow. You can see that the net charge is balanced. Zero net charge on the left, and there's also a zero net charge on the right. All right, now, this oxygen seems like it's gaining electrons, but it still does not have more than eight. Even though the electrons are moving towards the oxygen, it still has not broken the octet rule. Um, because remember, for purposes of evaluating the octet rule, we treat an, a pair that's shared the same as a pair that's owned. For purposes of evaluating the octet rule, we treat a pair that's shared the same as a pair that's owned. Well, in this picture, this pair was shared. And then in this picture, it was owned as a lone pair. But either way, we're going to treat them the same. So in both pictures, the oxygen would be thought of as having eight electrons. You can see that here from this picture. One, two, three, four, five, six electrons in the lone pairs, and two electrons in the bond. So it still has only eight electrons. Remember, the purpose of this example was to convince you that you don't have to worry that you are going to exceed an octet when you're forming a lone pair. There's no way to exceed an octet when you're forming a lone pair out of a pi bond. And of course, we know that's the only way to form a lone pair. There's no way to form a lone pair from another lone pair. That's illegal. We only have to worry about forming lone pairs from pi bonds, and when you do that, there's no way to exceed an octet. And I hope this example has convinced you. This oxygen has eight electrons around it, and when we moved the lone pair, I'm sorry, when we moved the pi bond into a new lone pair, the oxygen still had eight electrons around it. It still had not exceeded an octet. Okay, so this is an important idea. This type of transition, we don't need to worry about uh, exceeding an octet. There's no way when you make a pi bond into a lone pair that you can exceed an octet. Do we need to worry about exceeding an octet here? Well, notice we're forming a lone pair. There's no need to worry that a lone pair is going to exceed an octet. That's what we just learned. Pi bond to lone pair, that can't possibly exceed an octet. So we already know that this is going to be a perfectly legal electron pushing arrow. So this is legal.